points. The big man, Prince E. Bay, finishing off a lob from Isaiah Taylor, and it was drawn up specifically by Darren Horn, right? No, no. <laughs> absolutely not. It's good to have you with us. And, and, and Shaka, uh, tell everybody a little bit about uh, why, when you first accepted the job at Texas, what appealed to you about Darren and why you wanted him as a part of your staff. Well, I've known Darren for uh, for a while. We, we have a couple mutual friends that uh, introduced us. Uh, plus, when I was an assistant coach at uh, – at Clemson for Oliver Purnell. Uh, Darren was just getting to South Carolina, and uh, you know, so we we didn't know each other great, but we I, I certainly uh, knew all about him and his program. Then I went to Florida as an assistant. Uh, they actually won the SEC East that we were in the same division in that year. I think that was your first year mm -hmm. at uh, at South Carolina. So uh, when I got the job, you know, I knew that uh, on our staff. Uh, we, we needed to make sure we had someone that had a great deal of experience as a head coach, but also was going to be able to connect with our guys uh, because the way we do things, just being able to relate to the guys, communicate with the guys, help them on the court and off the court uh, is, is huge. And, and I felt like Darren was, was going to be a great blend of all those things. So, Darren, let me ask you, what appealed to you about what Chuck was talking to you about, about being a part of all of this here? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing, Craig, is I, you know, I'd been out for three years and I've been a head coach and, and kind of felt like if I was going to get back in, I, I wanted to be at a great place with a great person. And, and you weren't a bad broadcaster, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I got a chance to, to hear Darren's work. And you did, I mean, did you like that part of it? Yeah, no, I, I was having a lot of fun and, and uh, I was getting a lot of games and, and uh, learning a lot and, and learning a lot about basketball, kind of stepping away and, and getting a different perspective, watching different coaches coach. But, but you wanted to get back in it. I, I wanted to get back in. I, I desperately missed being a part of a team and competing and, and uh, having an opportunity to impact young people and, and to be able to do it at a university like this with somebody like Shaka Smart uh, was something that to me was uh, an incredible opportunity. I'm really just grateful for the chance to be a part of the staff. How different is it working with Shaka than, say, with coaches that you've worked with in the past, both as a sister and a head coach? Oh, I, I mean, I think everybody's different in, in, in how they do things, uh, you know, without question. It's been a while since I've worked for anybody else, but I, I think the biggest thing uh, with Shaka is he gives you a lot of autonomy uh, in the areas that you're responsible for. And, and uh, you know, I'm learning a lot. It's one of the reasons I wanted to come work for him is I knew this was a guy that I could learn a lot from, not only X and O's and basketball, uh, but how to run a program and deal with people. I've been doing this a long time. Craig, this Shaka is the best connector of, with young people that I've ever seen in this business, and I I think you can see it in the way that our guys play and respond. Shaka, that when it came down to what the things that you were looking for from Darren, we talked a little bit about it, but did you also have him in mind in that, as you pointed out in the past, the offensive coordinator type thing and the big guy uh, assistant and those things? Were, was that what was flashing through your mind early when you were thinking about uh, asking him to join you? Well, no, I think the, the more important thing was just his depth of experience and then, again, the fact that I thought, uh, he would do a great job connecting with our guys. Uh, that, that was more important than anything. I, I knew, you know, when, when a guy's been a successful head coach for nine years, he can coach offense, defense, whatever you want him to coach. He can coach the guards. He can coach the big guys. But I think what's more important is that you get someone that is going to be aligned with, with the coaching staff and their vision for what we want to do with our guys. We, we want to help our guys become the best version of themselves. Then once we got here, we kind of figured out, it would make a lot of sense for, for Darren to work with our bigs. Uh, did an unbelievable job over the summer with all of our bigs, but particularly with Cam Ridley, just getting him to look at the game a little bit differently than he had before. And I would say probably more than anything, it's been building confidence with Cam, and that's just been through spending time. Yeah, I know, I know that we, we all got a chance to see that, and it got a lot of folks in Austin very excited. And even though you hadn't been with Cam before you got here, it must have got – you'd seen him in the past play through television, so it must have excited you to see him respond the way he did. Well, it, it, it really did. And, uh, you know, I think more importantly, the opportunity not just to work with Cam but all of our bigs when you look at the depth of, of having so many guys. And, and you know, it's, it's really easy as an assistant coach – to get players to respond when they respond to your head coach first and really believe in what he's doing. And I, and I think really anything that we do as assistants is just an extension of what coach is doing with them in terms of instilling that confidence and building those relationships with them. You know, if he's not doing it, 
doesn't really matter uh, what we're doing with it. And again, I, I've never been anybody around anybody that does it as well as Shaka does. So any progress that's being made uh, is a result of us trying to carry out what he's already doing and maybe add to it. So I think you both could speak to this, and that is the issue of the importance of chemistry within a coaching staff. You both had to put coaching staffs together. You've both been a part of other coaching staffs where the head coaches were asking you to be involved. How critical is that to get that kind of chemistry, that right fit with yeah. everybody that you're bringing in? It's really important, and it's one of those things that it's not going to happen on day one. Uh, you know, we're in our first year here. This particular staff has not been together, even though somebody like Mike Morell has been together with me for a while. And I think, really, we're just continuing to build that chemistry and get to know each other. I mean, when we got here, we had to roll up our sleeves and really go to work in a lot of different areas. We didn't have as much time as I would have liked to have to get together and really sit in the meeting room and get everything exactly laid out exactly the way we wanted it to be because we had to hit the ground running from the standpoint of, most importantly, our guys. Secondly, recruiting. And third, just the standpoint of figuring this place out because when you come to a new place, it's a completely different dynamic than where you came from. Yeah, and, and different for you coming in. But, but like I said, I know you have strong feelings about how important it is to have that connectivity between the coaches as well as what you have with the players. Well, there's no question. And, you know, I think, you know, my goal was to make sure that I'm trying to figure out I'm the new guy coming in and, and, and our job, you know, I think there's a misconception sometimes a guy that's been a head coach is going to come in and add all these things that he has. And, and that's not my role at all. My role is to figure out what this guy wants and do the best job I can to help him implement that. And the biggest part of that, as you said, is is becoming a team player first and foremost with the staff. And we've got a tremendous uh, staff, not, not just our assistant coach, uh, that, that I'm fortunate to work with, but our GAs and managers and everybody, uh, guys that are really bought in and, and sold out to help in Texas basketball be successful. Darren Horn's our special guest. We'll have more coming up. want to remind you gearheads out there to sign up for Speed Perks from Advanced Auto Parts. The more you crank, the more you save. No cards, no points, no nonsense. Advanced Auto Parts, let's get you back to the garage. More with Darren Horn coming up with Longhorn Weekly with Shaka Smart. Continues live from Pluckers here on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn IMG Radio Network. Longhorn Weekly, the Longhorn Ted basketball coach Shaka Smart. I'm Craig Way, our special guest during this portion of the program, Longhorn's assistant coach Darren Horn. Now, there was some brief mention about Darren in his head coaching days. I'm going to take you back before that, before you were a head coach, before you were an assistant. You were a darn good basketball player at Western Kentucky even before that. So, I mean, what? how much – did your playing days help mold and shape what you wanted to do in becoming a coach? Well, I was one of those guys that was was not that great a player, actually, but uh, was fortunate to be on some really good teams and, and figured out pretty quick if, if I didn't learn how to do all the little things that coaches love, I wasn't going to be able to play very much <laughs> at all. And so I, I think that just kind of in, instilled in me the importance of, of what goes into winning. And I was, I was really fortunate to play uh, for a guy by the name of Ralph Willard, who is uh, an assistant at Louisville now with Rick Pitino, who uh, is just, you know, had a huge influence on me. And, and uh, so I, I think I knew I always wanted to go into coaching, but there's no question my college playing experience kind of helped fuel that even, even more. And you played at a place, not only in a state, the state of Kentucky that loves its basketball. Western Kentucky also has tradition. They were a 1971 Final Four team. They, they have a long, rich basketball tradition as well so uh, the people there in Bowling Green Kentucky love their basketball just as much as in Lexington or Louisville yeah, no question I mean it, it really matters there uh, and there is great tradition you know at one time it was top 10 in the in the country in college basketball history for conference championships and all-time wins and and a lot of different things and a great basketball tradition very knowledgeable fan base okay so you go from there and then you become an assistant at Western Kentucky and then uh, at, at Moorhead State under Kyle Macy and then under uh, Tom Crean at Marquette. What did you take from each of those experiences with some, uh, you know, well-known guys who were coaching in the game? Yeah, you know, a, a lot of great basketball guys, as, as you said, uh, where, where you take a little bit of, of everything. Uh, you know, Kyle Macy, you know, played at the NBA level for seven years, was a, a legend in Kentucky, and and I learned a lot from him. And then, you know, really when I was with Tom Crean, who recruited me to play at Western Kentucky, he was an assistant coach there for Coach Willard. Uh, is, is, is when I really got my eyes opened up to what it means to run a college basketball program and all that goes in 
uh, to being successful. And, and, you know, I still think to this day, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity he gave me that, uh, you know, he's about as good as there is out there in terms of the whole of what this thing is all about, not just the coaching, uh, but, but dealing with all facets of a college basketball program. I take it you're not surprised at all by what he's got going in Indiana this year. No, not at all, because no, nobody's going to work harder or be more prepared. And, uh, you know, again, just you know, really good at, at getting his team ready to play and uh, outstanding uh, offensive teacher. And, uh, you know, not surprised that, uh, you know, his team is competing and playing well in the Big Ten. You had success right out of the gate as a, as a coach when you're at Western Kentucky. Were, were you – did you expect that of yourself? Did you, did you know it was going to – happen that quickly the way it did at the start? Well, I, I think the most important thing to winning sometimes is, is having good jobs in Western Kentucky. It's a pretty good job and uh, inherited a decent team and uh, was fortunate to recruit some good guys. And so uh, we were able to win. But, you know, getting high expectations there. We, you know, in a one-bid league, we never got over the hump until that fifth year of getting in the tournament. So mm -hmm. uh, while, while we were winning a lot of basketball games, it, it didn't always feel like we were as successful as we need to be. And then, of course, you got a chance, obviously, to coach in the SEC and did that at, at South Carolina as well. What are the things that you – you took from your time there in Columbia? Well, just a great experience to be, you know, a head coach at a flagship university. Uh, great people there. Uh, no, no complaints about my time there. Learned a lot. Uh, you know, especially I think as it relates to being in a league like we're in now where, you know, you recognize really quickly there just aren't no nights off. If you don't play well, you're going to lose. It's, it's not that you've got a chance. If you don't bring your A game, uh, you know, that, that, that really only ensures you have a chance to win when you're playing in a league like the SEC, like the Big 12. And, you know, this league is, is murderer's row for sure. Yeah, all right. So so you coach in a couple of places. Then you get away from coaching for a bit. And for three years, you worked for ESPN and the SEC Network. What was that like to go from coaching to becoming an analyst? And, and a good one, by the way. Like I said, for folks who saw you, they, they knew you had an understanding of the game, obviously, from a coaching and player's perspective. But what was that transition like for you going from coach to analyst? Yeah, it, was, it was like learning a whole new career. Literally, the first game that I did, I got zero instruction. I just showed up on time, and they gave me a headset, and it uh, was Pittsburgh. And, and actually, one of coaches, old uh, assistant coaches, uh, Jamie and Christian at Mount St. Mary's, and, and did the game. And, and when it was over, Craig, you, you'll appreciate this. I, you know, I, I'm sitting there, and I got my headset on. I'm just kind of hanging out because as a coach, there's always something else to do. There's right. media responsibility. There's talking to your team. There, what do we have academically? What are we doing recruiting? And the guy that I worked with, is packing up his bag and he looks at me and says what are you doing and I'm like well are we done he's like yeah the producer said we're done man it's <laughs> over and I'm like, it just felt like it it wasn't finished yet, you know, as a coach and uh, being a former coach. But had a blast, uh, met a ton of great people, learned a lot. And, again, not just about broadcasting, but uh, about the game, being able to travel around and, and, and watch from a different perspective. All right. Uh, coming up, we're going to get Darren Horn's thoughts on this Longhorn basketball team, its current journey here and what's to come. We continue with Longhorn Weekly live from Pluckers, the West Campus location, right after this. Big uh, shot there for Connor, and I know you've you've talked with him a lot about just as everybody has about him having enough confidence in his shot to be able to take it at the times when he really needed, and he really uncorked a big one last night. You know, he really did, and Craig, when you think about it, he's had about three or four of those somewhere in the last three minutes of game where we really needed a basket, and he's knocked a big one down like he did last night. And I, I think to some degree, maybe we'd all like to see him shoot even more because we think he's capable of making those shots, but he's made some big ones for this team. Uh, you mentioned the, the, the joy you get working with the big men. Uh, they're all different, aren't they? All these they guys really are. are different. D describe a little bit what the, the relationship is like with, with Cam Ridley, with Prince Ebay, with Shaq Claire, with, with Connor, with, the, with all the big guys. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I talked about being out and, and had gaining a different perspective. And the first thing I did when I got here and Coach told me he wanted me to take the bigs is ask them, how do you want to be coached? And uh, to a man, every one of them said, you know, really, really just, you know, want to be talked to. We've been doing this a while. We're all matured. You know, I don't want to be yelled and screamed and cussed at, but just just talk to. And so you know, we've really tried to take that approach for the most part. Doesn't mean we don't challenge them or get after them. Some days we do. Uh, but they've been very responsive to that. You know, Cam is uh, pretty laid back in terms of personality wise, but um, though, I think he's lacked confidence in some ways. At the same time, he knows he's really talented and good. And the biggest thing that he's done is showed up and worked really hard every day. Uh, even now in his uh, injury, he's doing that. Uh, you know, Prince is a guy that is really intelligent and uh, maybe don't want to let on like he is. 
uh, but a guy that can uh, re- really respond to uh, you know just being talked to about what he needs to do uh, without question. You know, Connor, same thing. Really intelligent guy that uh, really understands the game, has great feel uh, for the game. Uh, and, and is a fun guy to coach. And then, and then Shaq Lear has been a kid that uh, I've really enjoyed coaching because he, he, he's got a certain maturity to him. He's, we joke with him and tell him, you know, he, you know, we think maybe you're 27, 28 years old, Shaq. Uh, could have been around the block a little bit, <laughs> uh, but uh, really has grown and uh, been fun to coach. All right. Uh, I've got to ask you about your family a little bit here. First of all, tell everybody how you met your wife. Uh, at, at school, uh, we were both seniors at uh, Western Kentucky University. Met in uh, in a class. I kind of changed my major around and, and got the last seat in class close to her. And uh, her her roommate seemed impressed that that I was there, but she had no idea who I was. So, uh, <laughs> okay. I, I try to tell the story that she chased me, but that's not true. It was okay. the other way around. Yeah. Uh, you have two children. You have a daughter, Caroline, and and you have Walker, age twelve. Uh, did, 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 what was the adjustment like uh, for for your kids coming here? Well, I mean, the biggest thing was just a move and a move, you know, living in Kentucky that's, you know, pretty far from home. But they were thrilled to be back uh, as a part of a team and in in coaching and at a place like Texas. And, you know, who could complain about living in Austin, Texas? What a great place to live. True. Uh, Now, what really excites you about this program, this university, the the students uh, that are on campus, the students that are in the program, what shock and what the step, what what really excites you about what's – there for this Texas program now and going forward? Well, I, th- I think it starts with Shaka Smart. Uh, I mean, it's easy to get excited and, and be excited to come to work every day when, when that's the guy that's leading your program. He's a terrific coach and he's, he's an even better person. And that's an easy sell for us in recruiting. It's easy to communicate with the guys that are in our program currently and get them bought into what's going on uh, because of who you're working with. Uh, really excited about the young players in our program. Uh, I think our freshmen uh, have done an outstanding job uh, so far. And, and, and done really well. You know, Kendall Yancey is starting to come on and, and, and play well uh, also. And so excited about those guys moving forward. And, and I'll say this, Craig, you know, one of the things we heard, uh, you know, a lot was, well, you know, the atmosphere is just okay in the building. And, and I'm telling you, I think the atmosphere has been really good. Uh, you know, has it been full every night? No, it hasn't, but it's been full for a couple games. And uh, those that show up have been into it and been basketball fans and really helped us win basketball games. So I've been impressed with the basketball fans uh, here at the University of Texas. The other part, and you brought it up and so did Chaka as well, and it's the recruitment side of things, recruiting. Uh, some coaches really like recruiting. They, they, they immerse themselves in it. Others do it because it has to be done, but they don't necessarily enjoy it that much. Where do you fall on all of this? I'm, I'm probably somewhere in the middle, to, to be honest with you. And uh, one of the things that helps that is we've got a head coach that immerses himself in it, uh, is, uh, does so much. Maybe, honestly, at this level, uh, willing to do as much as any head coach uh, in the country in terms of building relationships with these players. And I think you've seen that pay off already uh, in, in the recruiting that, that we've been able to do. And, and I think where it's going to pay huge dividends is with the underclassmen now that we actually have some time. Because we've been playing catch up with this 2016 class uh, from day one. But I think uh, with time and uh, given the opportunity, Shaka's ability to build relationships and what we have to sell here at the University of Texas gives us an opportunity uh, to recruit the kind of guys that, that can help us be really good. Appreciate you dropping by tonight. Thank hey, you. Thanks Darren. for having me, Craig. I appreciate it.